France is known as a land of good food and exquisite taste. A land where people know how to savor life, how to enjoy beauty and refinement. And around the table, where fine tastes linger on the lips and divine wines go to the head, other French passions come to bear. Fashion, seduction, savoir-faire. Dining in France is an obsession with atmosphere. And it is more than just eating. It is a total experience which plays with all the strings of your senses. Spirit and mind, passion and pleasure combine to make dining in France a mirror image of a country's character and of a people's soul. During the next 13 weeks, we will visit some of the great contemporary chefs, Progro, Bocu, Blanc, Maxime, and many others and live with them their intensive creative process. And we are going to watch the making of champagne and wine, cheese and bread, foie gras, pastries and cognac, things which are known the world over, but which are simple. Good cooking abounds in the countryside of the province of Burgundy, a region where great chefs are nurtured at home. This is the case with the celebrated chef, Georges Blanc. Indeed, it is a characteristic of his heritage. In 1872, a small restaurant was founded by his ancestors in Vonas, this charming village in the heart of Burgundy's breast country, known as La Mère Blanc, Mother Blanc. It was run by the Blanc women, for three generations. People came from far and near to partake of the traditional cuisine of these famed ladies. In 1968, Georges Blanc took over the good name of his mother. Since then, he has taken the restaurant to the pinnacle of French cuisine, with three stars in the prestigious Michelin Guide. George, what I find fascinating about this restaurant is that it was founded over 100 years ago, 1872. That was four years before the centenary of the United States, before the Statue of Liberty. And yet, it started as a little local restaurant, and today it's one of the most renowned restaurants in the world. The same family has had it from the beginning. Yes, the, the first generation of the Blanc family arrived in Vanai in 1872, coming from a, a little village of the Brest country, about 15 kilometers from here. And they start as, a, it was a quite simple auberge by the market uh, place and uh, the second generation generation in uh, 1902 uh, improved uh, the restaurant to to make it well known with the, the starting of the motor car uh, traveling and uh, railways and uh, the third generation was my mother who continued his uh, mother-in-law in 1933 and um, I arrived in 1968. The originality and authenticity of Georges Blanc's cuisine begins with the fine local products. Brest is renowned for its chickens, birds with a succulent flavor, not the mass-produced, tasteless birds found all too often today. The poulet de Brest, as they are called in French, have unusually white feathers. In fact, they are soaked in milk once their feathers have been plucked in order to accentuate the translucent whiteness of their tender skin. It is from this chicken farm that George Blanc procures fowl for his specialty, poulet de breast à la crème, breast chicken in cream sauce. The poulet breast gain, uh, what is it that makes the breast chicken with its worldwide reputation so different? First of all, the way it's bred. It's the only completely distinguishable chicken. 
because it's the only one with an appellation contrôlée, a quality label awarded by a board of examiners and quality controllers. The law stipulates very precisely the methods of breeding. The same way the quality of control for wines? Exactly. There is the pedigree, the race. The chicken is adapted to the land on which it is bred. It has a very light bone structure, a very thin skin, and that's because this region is light in calcium. In both its ground and water resources, this has repercussions on the bone structure of the chickens because of its very delicate skin. The chicken cannot be treated mechanically when its feathers are plucked. They must be plucked very precisely and carefully in order to preserve the skin. Can you breed poulet de Bresse in other regions of France, or is there something special in this region? There's always the question of the land, and then it's always been bred here. Yes, the land and the ancestral method of breeding. When did it all start? Oh, it goes way back. There's always been the poulet de Bresse. All the French kings ate poulet de Bresse. Everyone knows that. So it goes back centuries. Yes, yes, it's a, quite an accomplishment. We maintain the traditions of giving the chicken a free reign of the field, a healthy feed using only cereals. We never have used industrial techniques, which... Uh, would be much more rational. Above all, avoided enclosure. The chicken must search for its own food in nature, small worms, insects. They eat a lot of grass, and of course, uh, that's free for the breeder. Let's talk more specifically about the method of breeding. How old is the chick when it arrives here? One day, uh, the person who helps them hatch is the accouver, a sort of uh, midwife for chickens. This is a completely different profession with special instruments. The breeders are not equipped for this work. Describe the development of the chicken. Uh, the one-day-old chick is very small, weighing 30 to 40 grams when it arrives. Uh, by the time it's four months old, it'll weigh about four and a half pounds. It spends three to four weeks in the nursery where the ambient temperature is much higher than for the older chicken. It then moves to a chicken coop where it spends the next breeding period, that is, uh, the th remaining three months in the state of freedom. At night, it goes back to the coop where it has food and water, and outside, it has freedom, the, the grass and the sun, and uh, all the things which make for its quality. Briefly, it takes two to three times longer to breed a poulet de Brest than a chicken bred indoors. That's what gives it its high quality. Yeah, the fact that it's free, that it exercises and uses energy, that it lives in the fresh air, all this affects the taste. The poulet de Brest is the pride of the region indeed the pride of France, for its colors are unnaturally patriotic. And who would ever think to find the French flag bandied across the countryside by a chicken? There it is. The blue, white, and red of the breast chicken, blue feet, white feathers, and red crest. <laughs> we could say, uh, vive la France. <laughs> Shall we give it a break and set it loose? There you go. It's not very energetic. Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> Ah. You turn over the morsels. They should be brown, but not dry. It's the color, which comes from the thickened juices that will give the sauce its great taste. To make the gravy, we sprinkle a little flour and let it brown slightly. Then we add the water. The chicken will simmer for about 30 minutes in its gravy. And that gravy will absorb the flavor of both the chicken and the uh, thickened juices. His cooking is not complicated. But what is important are the natural ingredients, the careful preparation method, and the cooking itself. These attest to the lightness and the taste of Georges Blanc's cuisine. After a meal at La Mer Blanc, I have the irresistible impulse to smack my lips.
Allez. George Blanc does not break with tradition. For French cooking is a cuisine of sauces. But his sauces serve as a liquid seasoning, lighter, more digestible than their predecessors. His sauces are, so to speak, the lace collar on the cotton shirt, the rose on the marble tabletop, the accompaniment to a melodic string. For me, cooking shouldn't be overly sophisticated. It's something done for friends around the table. Cuisine shouldn't be pretentious. I think you need to find the right combinations for both the palate and the eye. This is important. At least, this is how I feel about it. Other chefs would probably have a different approach, perhaps a more elaborate or a more technical one. But that's not for me. I always emphasize lightness, freshness, and refinement. La Mer Blanc cultivates atmosphere as well as cuisine. With 30 rooms and the splendid prestige suite, the inn at La Mer Blanc is a delicate and tasteful mixture of tradition and modern comfort. There's one thing that one realizes when you come to George Blanc. It's not sufficient just to eat here, but you ought to try to stay here. George is considerably enlarged, what used to be the little auberge of La Mer Blanc. But he's done it in a very special way maintaining the tradition of the region. What he's done is mix antique furniture with modern furniture, but always in such a way that you feel that you're in the heart of the country of Bress when you stay in one of these beautiful rooms that he's organized, like, for example, uh, this particular suite. It's this respect for tradition that highly motivates George Blanc when he doesn't have to cook or run his hotel. He's always going around the whole countryside to antique stores, looking for special things which will help decorate this place. I mean, for example, like this chimney, something in the tradition of the region. I need a typical Bresson chimney for the suite. This one is pretty typical. Is this a regional stone? Yes, this is a fireplace from Bresse, carved in Maconnais stone. You find these in the large farms of the region. Yeah, but look at the size of it. It is a little big, yes. Would you have something smaller? You're right, it is a little too big. Especially for a suite? That's right, you still have to put some nice furniture in there. Is that uh, St. George? It sure is. Didn't you have one like this before? Yes, they had another one, but it was a bit uh, differently. Did you see that? Oh, that's just in the stone. It's in the nature of the stone. It's not a very hard stone. La Mer Blanc has added a gift shop. And once again, whether in the restaurant, the inn, or his gift shop, by insisting on the perfection of simple things, Blanc has attained the control and ability to create a totally successful, as well as satisfying experience. It all started for me five and a half years ago, where I fell in love with a half bottle of Mouton Rothschild in 1970. Peter, really George started. Blanc's British sommelier, really, manages the vast wine cellar. He is an expert who clearly knows the contents of this huge cavern and the particular taste and bouquet of nearly every bottle. That takes practice, but what a pleasure. Peter, let's talk about this very special uh, wine cellar. Uh, how many bottles do you have in here? Well, here actually, there's running between 80 and 90,000 throughout the year, varying on the, whether it's the beginning of the year where the stock is fairly full, or the end of the year where the customers are taking quite a few out of us. And also, you have another place where you keep wine here. Yes, we have another cellar on the other side of the river where we store about 100, 120,000 bottles on top of it. That means you've got about 230,000 bottles. Now, what is all this wine worth? About seven million francs, or about a, a million dollars. About a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, how, the, how do you choose the wine? Are you in charge of that, or does George Blanc get involved in it? Or well, what? between the, the head waiter, myself, and Monsieur Blanc, we go out tasting and choosing the wines for the restaurant. Tell me, you've got a couple of very special bottles here. Do you want to show them to me? Yes, well, uh, for example, how about this? That's uh, a Remy Conti in 1945 which is actually under the, the old French vines, actually made with phylloxera. It's the last vintage of Romney Conti with the old vines. They actually took the, the vines out in 1946. What else can I show you? 
start with the Burgundy region, perhaps. Uh, just next door to Romany Conti. This is La Romanie, which is a very small, minor known vineyard, 1904. Very fine Incredible. wine, very elegant. Was 1904 a good year? It's a vintage which is still surprisingly well. Very fine, very elegant on the bouquet. Because some people say burgundies don't last that long. Well, uh, perhaps they don't nowadays, but in those days they did. George Blanc, the juggler. Blanc is an amazingly versatile man. In the midst of his busy life, he's found time for yet another art. Yeah. Juggling was just what provided the eye opener at a charity show organized by a group of famous chefs at the Moulin Rouge in Paris. French chefs are celebrities, stars in their own right. George Blanc is, of course, used to publicity. But this is his stage debut. And this energetic jack of all trades is nervous and excited. Well, if you can't be perfect all of the time, you can certainly be charming. And the charm of this celebrated man lies in his natural, unaffected manner. In the fact that he has not been seduced by fame and fortune. Rather, he has been able to seduce others to enjoy the best things in life, even his juggling. Vraiment pourquoi Georges Blanc se casse autant la tête pendant toute la saison. Il vient de tenir son plus grand succès en fermant des assiettes vides. This man is comfortable on stage, but in the kitchen, he is the true master. These last 20 years, uh, the cuisine has changed in France. We, we spoke about the new, the new, the nouvelle cuisine, and uh, I, I spent this, uh, this new French cooking on the premises with uh, an evolution because before was uh, very traditional with the, with the poulet à la crème, with the frog legs, with the pancakes, the potato pancakes. Now the, the new French cooking is more renewed in creation and more light. Alors, uh, this voilà is one of my favorite bien. recipes. La tomate Tomato stuffed with champignons. snails and mushrooms. Alors, this is quite a simple, simple combination, uh, uh, but it has a very fresh taste. Personally, I prefer fresh, light things, uh, seasonal products. So I uh, have marvelous herbs and greens in my garden. Spinach, parsley, chervil, chives. The tomatoes are very good at this time of the year. A nice ripe tomato. A few little turnips I've cut here. And then we have the beginning of autumn with these beautiful girol mushrooms. And a little regional note with snails from Burgundy. I've prepared some crushed tomatoes, and I think we're ready to start the recipe. This is rather a summer recipe, and especially pleasing to the eye. I believe that cooking has changed over the last 20 years. It used to be more dogmatic, 
Chefs tended to follow the traditional cookbooks, each one merely interpreting recipes that were already predetermined. Today there is more room for imagination in cuisine. Now we're going to heat up the small saucepan and put in a bit of butter in. Let it melt. I'm taking the shallots and putting some in. I'll let them saute lightly. Here are the girol mushrooms which I have chopped. And we'll make a little mushroom stuffing, all very natural. Later on, we'll add a bit of crushed tomatoes to them. It simmers nicely. Snails. There we go. The snails have been chopped so that they mix together better with the mushrooms. And now the crushed tomatoes, as I mentioned earlier. Not too much, just to give a little bite. Just a touch. There. It has condensed slightly and it has gained consistency. Now here's my green sauce. Mixed and then thickened with butter. Stirring constantly, of course. This is, a, this is called a herb butter. You can add nettle too if you want. Wild white nettle. It's already been seasoned, of course. Salt and pepper. We can add a drop of uh, vinegar. There. And a touch of cream. There we go. Our mushroom puree is ready. Here are my tomatoes. So we can start putting it all together. Now I'll put my preheated tomatoes on the stuffing, like that, just covering it. With the pointed end always facing outward. I'll put a little crushed tomato in the center, like that. And then I'll put a little green sauce in the spaces in between. Turnips. Then it's brushed lightly with olive oil. Flores cuisine seduces the eye as well as the palate. For the food itself is gone in a relatively short time. But George Blanc's creation lives on in the memory and in the sensations it has evoked. George Blanc walks the acres of his newly bought land nearby, envisaging the vineyards he will grow here. Just as surely as this French chef takes from the earth, so will he give to it, giving with that love and wisdom inbred through generations, which has brought him and La Mer Blanc such acclaim and respect. For Georges Blanc, happiness is bringing the goodness and beauty of the land and its history to bear fruit in the here and now, without ever forgetting his past. Wine is my second passion in life, and my great, great father was a farmer, and uh, I would like to, to return to this, to the, as my family was in the previous century. It's very important for me. Thank you.